Video editing can be one of the most daunting aspects in the entire video creation process, but it definitely doesn't have to be. In this video, we're gonna break it all down for you in a full video editing tutorial for beginners using Windows or PC. And we're also gonna drop a ton of editing tips along the way to get you up to speed and to make your editing much faster. Hey, it's Justin Brown here from Primal Video, where we help entrepreneurs and business owners amplify their business and brand with video. If you're new here, then make sure you click that subscribe button and all the links to everything we mentioned in this video, you can find linked in the description box below. So let's jump into it. We're always asking the Primal Video community for suggestions on the types of content you'd like us to cover. Now, you may not be surprised to hear that one of the biggest challenges that really takes the number one spot for a lot of people is video editing. The good news is you can significantly reduce the amount of time you're spending in your video editing software with an understanding of the fundamentals of editing a video and just some simple tips and tweaks to your editing process. And the even better news is you're actually gonna get all of that inside this video. Now, before we jump in, I wanna hear from you guys in the comments while you're watching this video. What is your number one tip for editing better videos or to do it faster? We always learn a ton down there, so make sure to take a look at what everyone else is sharing as well. And once we're done, we won't stop with this video. You're also gonna get access to a free downloadable guide that you can follow along with next time you're editing a video so that you don't forget anything. All right, so first off, let's look at the software. Now, if you're interested in a video covering all of the options for video editing software on Windows, I'll put a link to a video where we've covered that up there. But I'm personally using Adobe Premiere. I know that this is gonna be a lot more complex and complicated than a lot of you out there, especially if you're just starting out. Now, if you're new, then grab a copy of something like Shotcut or VSDC and start running with that for now. And you can come back in a few months when you're editing like a pro or when you're ready to upgrade or you wanna check if you're ready to upgrade to see what the other options are. Now for this video covering the fundamentals of video editing, we're gonna be running through in Shotcut. Now because we are covering the fundamentals, it doesn't mean that you need to be using that piece of software because these fundamentals are gonna flow through to any video editing software out there. So follow along in either the application that we're using or in your own video editing software. All right, so here we are in Shotcut. Now this is the first thing you'll see when you open it up. So to start off with, you'll wanna bring in your video footage and all the video assets that you're going to be using in your editing project. So we'll open up an Explorer window and we'll find the files that we wanna bring in. So we'll select those three and we'll drag them into our playlist window here. And you can see now that we've got our three clips here inside our video project. So the first one that we imported, this top one here, is just some B-roll or overlay footage. The second one is a music file that we're gonna use in the edit. And the third one is our actual video file or the content of the video. Now just a really quick overview of the interface. This is the playlist area. This is where all of our files and everything are displayed. You can also swap it out here for properties to see clip properties. So you can see that these are 4K files. And then you've also got your filters down here as well, or your effects. Over here is the playback window. This is where you can see what you're going to be playing back or the file that you're actually editing. And down the bottom here is your timeline. This is where you'll actually do your video editing. So we'll come back over here to playlist. We'll select our actual video file here, our content. Click on that and we'll drag it down into our timeline. Now you can see what that's done automatically. It's created our audio waveforms or the visual representation of our audio file or of our audio that's spoken inside the video. So as we click here and scrub through here, you can see the parts where I'm speaking have this graph shown and the parts where I'm silent is completely flat or close to it. So that makes it really easy to go through your video to find the parts where you're actually talking and remove anything where you're not. Now we can zoom in and out on the timeline here using the minus and the plus buttons. Or we can also use the keyboard shortcuts for minus and plus on the keyboard to zoom in and out. So if I keep pressing minus now, you can see that we've zoomed right out and we can see this entire file. And before we get too much into the actual editing, it is a good idea to set up your project first. So if you come up here to settings and choose video mode, then you can choose the quality of the file that you want to actually create. So ideally here, you're editing in the same quality that you're filming at. So if your video recording was at 1080p, 25 frames per second, then you would pick that here to keep the quality as high as it can be. So our footage here was shot at 4K, 25 frames per second, so we'll pick that here. 
So now that we've got your video files in and we've got your project created, it's now time to start trimming down your video clips. So import all of your video content. You can see we've just got one file here, but if you've got multiple files, then drop them all down into the timeline and we're gonna start trimming them down. So where you start off with this is come back to the start of your clip. We'll zoom in on this section of our timeline, either dragging this up or pressing the plus button on the keyboard. And what we wanna do is position this playback head or this white line at where we want our video to start. So you can see it's gonna be just before I start talking here. And then we wanna add a cut in the timeline here and essentially just remove this first part that we don't want. So we can right click on our clip here and we can choose split at playhead or press the keyboard shortcut S on the keyboard. It's gonna do the same thing. And that's created a split there at that point. So we've now got two clips. So if we press the delete key on the keyboard, then that clip is gone. And then to remove this gap, we can right click on the gap and choose remove. And now our video is actually going to start back at the start where we just added our cut. That is now the first frame of our video. So if we zoom back out again now, we'll do this for all the clips that we've imported and we'll trim off the end of this video file as well. So we'll come across the end of the video where we want it to finish, which is about here. You can see with the audio, that's where I stopped talking. We'll again, press S on the keyboard to add a split. We'll click on that clip there and press delete, and that's gone. Now if I undo that, pressing Control Z a couple of times, one to undo the delete, one to undo the cut. Now another way to do it is to move your mouse cursor to the end of the clip. You can see it goes red there. We can actually then click and drag and change that end point of the clip. And whenever we let it go, it's actually adjusted our clip to finish at that point. And obviously if you remove too much, then you can drag it back out and go the other way as well until you get it right where you need it. So once you've gone through and trimmed off the start and the finish of each of the clips in your timeline, then the next step is to go through and start the actual editing process. This is where you're gonna go through your video from start to finish and you're gonna remove all of the bad takes and any of the mistakes or really anything that you don't want in your actual video file, you'll be going through in this step. So we'll start at the start here. You can either use the S key, you can delete the clips, you can then right click and remove the gap. Another way that you can cut down your footage too is by pressing the S to split the clip where you want it. And say we wanna remove this little section here while I'm not talking. We can move our mouse over here until it goes green with this mode enabled, which is the ripple trim and drop mode, which means it's gonna automatically close that gap for us. So if we click on this green part here and we slide across to the right, then we're changing the start of that clip until I let go. So that first part of that clip here has now been removed. So exactly the same as if we wanna remove this little section here, come across here, press S to split the clip. We'll then grab the green handle here and we'll swipe it along until that gap is closed. So that's how easy it is. Okay, so once you've gone through and you've added all of your cuts, you can actually reposition all your clips around in the timeline and move them around as you need to. So you can just pick them up and drag them around, maybe swap the order of them if you need to, to help build out the story or the flow that you're after. And then if you've got any additional B-roll or overlay footage that you wanna show while you're talking as well, then you can add a new video layer. Come over here to these three lines, which is a settings menu and choose add a video track. You can see we've got an additional layer here on top of our core content here. So if we come up here to our B-roll footage, we'll double click on that because we may not want this whole thing. This whole clip here is pretty big. So let's just say we pick this part here where we're playing with some camera settings. We can press I on the keyboard and that will mark an in point. You can see that now our selection range has moved from this whole clip to just here. And let's choose where we want this to finish probably around here somewhere. And we'll press O on the keyboard. So we've only got this small selection of this much bigger clip. Then you can either drag the clip down here or come down here and press the plus button to drop that down into our timeline. You can see it's automatically put it up on the layer above for us. And just like any other clip, we can pick it up, we can move it around to where we want it. We can adjust the start and the end point on it by using this green and red handles. So we could stretch it out a bit if we wanted, if it wasn't long enough. And then what happens is when we're playing back our video file in this section, this top clip is shown over the top of the other one. So if I mute these tracks now, just while we're editing here, if I click and drag from here, you can see that we've got the talking head, we've got me talking. And as we get to this clip here, then that clip is now shown over the top of 
the other one. Now playback's a little bit slow here because of the screen recording, but you can see what's going on. Okay, so once you've added all your B-roll or your overlay footage to your timeline, the next step is to add any titles or effects. So if we wanna add a name title, it says Justin Brown Primal Video onto the start of that video here, we'll come back to the start. We'll add an additional cut into our timeline here for the length of the title that we want. So we might play along here. Say we want the title to come in a couple of seconds in. We'll add a cut there, press S, and we'll play out our clip again. So maybe we want our title to come on for probably, yeah, about that sort of distance, that, that sort of time there, we'll press S. So we're gonna add a title to this small section of that bigger clip. So adding these cuts here hasn't changed our actual video. It is nothing noticeable that there are any cuts because we haven't made any adjustments to it, but this lets us apply a title just to this section of that bigger clip. So with that selected, come over here to filters. We're going to add a filter, press the plus, and then the one you wanna pick is video filters. Now, if we scroll down here and go down to text, there it is. We can click on that and that is now added. You can see we've got the default, which is time code added to our frame here. Now to change out the text, we can change time code to say Justin Brown, add a new line, primal video. And then in here you get to change things like your font, the color, we'll make that uh, light blue, Oswald bold. You can also scale down the actual box up here so we can click on that box and drag it down. So you can go through and customize up your titles to say anything that you'd like. Now, if we were actually creating this title here, what I would probably do is split these out in two. So we've got Justin Brown on one line. I would then copy that filter and paste it in. So we've got two text and I would call the bottom one, paste that back in, primal video, so that we've got two there. And that way you can really control the position of the two individual layers. So we'd probably bring that in about here. And the other one, if we click on that, we can move that across as well. So very simple titles that we can add in here. So now if we come back to the start of our clip and play through, you can see that at this point here, our titles appear, Justin Brown Primal Video, until the end of this clip here where they're going to disappear. There they go. So that's pretty straightforward. Okay, so once you've gone through and added all your titles in for the entire project, the next step is to add in any audio or any music to your project. So once again, we're gonna add in a new audio layer. So come up here to this menu and choose add a new audio track. And the audio track has appeared there below our video track. So we just come up here to our music track that we imported earlier. We can click on that and drag it down into our timeline on that new audio track. And just like our video tracks, we can pick up the clips we can move it around, we can drag the end to adjust the end time, we can drag the start to adjust the start time. We've got the same amount of control over the audio files as we do with the video files. So we'll pick this up and let's move it back to the start of our video so that the music starts when our video does. So you can see here that this music file is much shorter than our actual video. So here you could add in multiple music tracks or you could add in the same one and then set it up so that it repeats seamlessly so your viewers don't know that the music track is changing, but you've got a heap of control in here around your music files. You can clearly see on that audio waveform there, that drawing diagram, that the music drops off to nothing at the end of that track and then picks up again at the start of the next one. So you might wanna add in some sort of crossfade. So if you pick up this track and slide it along over the top of the other one, now obviously you'll have to work a little bit here to make sure that the beats and everything line up perfectly, but when you let go, it actually adds a crossfade between the two. So this first one will fade in to the next one that's starting. Now obviously you can get a lot more advanced than this. This is just a quick run through, but let's just see what that sounds like just with such a simple crossfade between the two. So it's probably usable. One of them finishes and it is kind of a soft fade then into the next one while it's starting as well. And what we'll do too is trim off the end of that audio file so that it finishes at the same time as the rest of our video there. Now if you do wanna add an audio fade to the end, then you can come back over here to filters. You can add a filter with that bottom track selected. We do wanna go over to audio filters and we'll go down to fade out audio. And when we click on that, the last part of our audio track here, if we zoom in, you can see here that it's got that gray triangle there that shows that it's fading the audio out over that last section. Okay, once you've got all your music in and any sound effects and 
all your audio files in as well. The next step is to go through and color correct your video. We'll zoom in a bit, click on the first clip here. It's always a good place to start. Click on the plus, we're back under filters, click on the plus, make sure that we've got show video filters selected. And you've got quite a few options in here in regards to color correction. The color grading is probably where I'd suggest you start out. So click on that one. And in here, you've got a heap of controls over your color. So you can see here, we've got our standard color wheels that you see in pretty professional video editing software to change the color and the brightness of the shadows. So the dark areas of your shot, the mid tones or the mid color areas of the shot and the highlights, the bright white areas and the bright colors of your shot. So you can see here as we adjust the shadows here, if we lift this up, that the shot is getting brighter or the dark areas are getting brighter. As we bring it back down, they're getting darker. And as we move these color wheels around here, you can see that the colors in the shot are changing quite a lot. So the trick here while you're tweaking your colors is not to move it around too much, but just to move it around until you're happy with the look of it or until you can correct any issues that are wrong with your shot. So the color grading filter is a good one to start with, but another one in here that is quite handy as well is to add another filter and come down to the white balance. So if we add that one, then in here, you can either pick your neutral color. So it should be a white or a gray. So we can say that something white in our scene is probably this bright bit up here. If we press that, that's gonna make an automatic adjustment for our color based on that point there being white. And then if we wanna make further adjustments, then we can grab this slider here to the left and right. You can see that we're making it more warm or more yellow. And if we come up this other way, it's gonna make it more blue or cooler. So now there's no real right or wrong with this. It is all personal preference. Creating videos is a creative process. So it's all about creating the look and feel that you're after. Now, once you've got your filters applied and you're happy with your color grade, then you can apply those to the rest of your clips as well. So what you wanna select here is copy the filters and then come across to the clips that you wanna paste it onto. Select the clips and then you can just choose paste and that's gonna paste those effects on to the next clip. So this one here also has our title on it as well, but it's now also got our color grading and our white balance filter added as well. That's how easy it is to go through and apply whatever your color grade or whatever your color settings are to your entire project by pasting them onto each clip. And once you've finished editing down your video and adding all your effects and everything on, then it's time to save the video file out. So you just come up here to export. So as you can see, there are a heap of options in here, but if you're not sure where to start, then I would suggest that you start with H.264 main profile. When you click on that, it's loaded the default settings or whatever your project was created in or whatever footage you've had in by default. So in our case, it was a 4K resolution at 25 frames per second. So these settings are all good to go. But obviously if you wanna change anything up and you know what you're doing here, then feel free to make any adjustments. And likewise with the codec, you can go through and customize everything up. If you really don't know what you're doing here, then you can almost leave everything as default. But the main one that you wanna look at here is the quality. So the quality it's defaulting to here is 60. I'd probably recommend 80 or 90, but again, you're going to end up with a bigger file size at the end. And the same for the audio, you can see the default quality is 50. I'm probably gonna push that up to around 80. But again, if you obviously need higher, then push it up to 100. Once you've got your settings there sorted, then you can press export file, choose where you wanna save your project. So we'll just put that one there on the desktop. It's named JB, press save. Then up in the top right hand corner here, you can see that it is exporting that project out for us. And it looks like it's gonna take a little while. And hopefully that's just because I'm doing the screen recording at the same time. But that's how easy it is to edit your videos down using Shotcut on PC. Now Shotcut is also available on Mac and on Linux as well. And obviously there is a lot more features and a lot more control that we can get into than in this really quick beginner walkthrough. I just wanna show you how to get up and running really quick in Shotcut so that you can start editing your videos down and start seeing some success with that. So that's a complete walkthrough of the fundamentals for video editing that you can apply and use no matter which video editing software you're using. Now I've also put together a free guide stepping through the entire process, which is linked on screen so that you can download it and print it out or have it on screen to follow along next time you're editing. So click the link on screen to download it now. And while you're editing, if you wanna get an awesome new animated intro for your content, then check out the tutorial linked on screen now for a step-by-step run-through on exactly how to do it and I'll see you soon.